Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. Um, we talked last time about mirrors and reflection, light hitting objects, light being transmitted, reflected, and absorbed. Do you remember what that means? Those are really important concepts and vocabulary. So make sure that you remember that transmitted means to pass through an object, reflected means to bounce back off an object, and absorbed means to be soaked up into it. So light waves hit objects and are either transmitted, reflected, or absorbed. That will be super important for you to just remember as we go through this entire unit. And how do light waves travel? They travel in a straight line, right? Unless they hit an object, let's look at this. Uh, they're going to be bounced off or absorbed or um, just reflected, bounce right straight back the same direction. So listen carefully to learn more about light, how it bends and how some familiar tools and instruments bend light in interesting and useful ways. The next day, Samuel was up bright and early. He had begun the day by painting in the garden, but as his eyes grew tired, he decided to put down his paintbrush and go for a walk in the woods with Alfie. Samuel loved to observe the perfectly straight shafts of light as they burst through the tree canopy into the woodland. Later, when they had returned from their walk, Samuel passed several hours scrapbooking photographs of his grandchildren. Before he knew it, it was late afternoon. Granddad, Granddad, we're here, came the sound of two young voices. We, replied Samuel jokingly, how come there are two of you? <laughs> two smiling children walked toward Samuel as he sat in his favorite armchair. One of the children was a girl about 11 years of age. She was tall and skinny and had braided brown hair. Her face was awash with freckles. She was carrying a large chocolate cake. The other child was a boy, about eight years old. He too had brown hair and he wore a bright red t-shirt that said, save trees, avoid homework. It was obvious they were brother and sister. They were two of Samuel's four grandchildren. Mom walked us up to the garden gate. She says she'll stop by later for dinner after we've been to the fair. She's going to bring us a meatloaf that she made, said the girl, whose name was Amy. Samuel grimaced. Mom says she knows you don't like meatloaf, but you have to eat it anyway because it's good for you, said the boy, who was clearly missing his two front teeth. Oh, she does, does she, replied Samuel. Yep, said the boy. How come you're here, said Samuel, laughing. Did you make that chocolate cake? The boy, whose name was Ethan, smiled boldly. I didn't make it, but I was the one who said it should be double chocolate cake and not just chocolate, exclaimed Ethan. Oh, well, I guess that's good enough reason for you to come to the fair with Amy and me, said Samuel, teasing his grandson. Let's go put the cake in the kitchen. In the kitchen, Samuel poured two glasses of ice cold water and placed a striped straw in each glass. Have a cold drink before we go, Samuel instructed. Moments later, they heard the sound of a very loud voice. Samuel, yelled Jack, you need to do something about that dog. He's run off with my hat again. Samuel and the children burst out laughing. At that moment, Jack appeared in the kitchen looking a little flustered. Why, if it isn't my two favorite children, Jack exclaimed. Samuel poured two more glasses of water and joined his guests at the kitchen table. All four sat and chatted and sipped their drinks. Grandpa, said Ethan, why does it look like the straw is separated where it meets the water? See, the part of the straw in the water is magnified 
and it looks like it's bent. That's a really good question, Ethan, said Samuel eagerly. Well, where should I begin? This could take a while, warned Jack, smiling the tiniest bit. You may have learned by now that light can be transmitted or passed through some objects, but not others, began Samuel. Objects that most light can pass through, such as eyeglasses or an empty glass, are called transparent. The objects that light cannot pass through, such as a tackle box or Jack's hat, are called opaque. My hat's been called worse, shouted Jack. Amy and Ethan giggled. What about objects that some light can go through, like frosted glass and tracing paper, asked Amy. I think there's a name for that, too. Yes, said Samuel. Those objects are called translucent. They let a little bit of light pass through, and it scatters or spreads out, causing the objects you see through them to look fuzzy. Cool, exclaimed Ethan. We're about to start learning all this stuff in third grade. Yeah, it is cool joined in Amy. And now you'll be a little ahead, Ethan. You may have also learned, continued Samuel, that when light waves travel through different transparent substances, such as through the air, and then through a drinking glass, or through a glass, and then through the water, they change speed, exclaimed Samuel. Amy nodded. I remember learning that when a light wave suddenly changes speed, it quickly changes its direction and looks like it's bending. That's why when you look into a river and see a fish, they seem closer to the surface than they actually are. Does that apply to dogs too? Yelled Jack, remembering catching Alfie. The children looked at Jack with puzzled expressions. Oh, it's a long story, said Samuel laughing. To return to your question, Ethan, that's exactly why a straw standing in a glass of water appears to bend or even break apart as it enters the water. This sudden change of speed and direction of the light wave is called refraction. Let me read that one more time. The sudden change of speed and direction of a light wave is called refraction. Refraction, repeated Ethan. Samuel nodded and continued. In fact, the refraction of light is how a concave or convex lens works in many instruments or tools that we use. Super important. Look at this illustration, boys and girls. Samuel went on. A convex lens curves outward so that it is thicker in the middle than at the edges. Rays of light passing through a convex lens are forced to change direction and move toward each other, making things look bigger if they are close enough to the lens. Convex lenses are used in instruments such as microscopes, magnifying glasses, binoculars, telescopes, and cameras. The lenses in my eyeglasses are convex to help me see close images better when I am painting. Samuel continued, on the other hand, a concave lens curves inward like a cave and is thinner in the middle than on the edges. Light rays passing through a concave lens are forced to change direction and move away from each other, making things look smaller. Cameras use lenses to focus the light rays inside the camera to record an image. Lenses are also used in security cameras and peepholes that are in some doors to help the background view look wider and easier to see. I don't want to interrupt your lecture, Samuel, but I've heard it's going to be busy at the fair tonight, so we should get going, said Jack as he finished his drink. Good point, Jack. We'd better get ourselves out of here. Yay, yelled Ethan excitedly. I want us all to go on the Chero Plains. We'll have to see about that, replied Jack. 
I need to be able to walk home from the fair in one piece, not a million zillion pieces. The two children laughed at Jack, and then Ethan ran off to rescue Jack's hat from Alfie. Fifteen minutes later, having arrived at the fair, they promptly bought a roll of tickets for various rides, as well as four helpings of cotton candy. They stood together for a short time, eating the sweet cotton candy and observing all the fun at the fair. Finally, Amy asked, What should we do first? I have a special request, said Samuel. I have been teaching Jack about the science of light. I have promised him a trip to the House of Mirrors. Uh, it's more like a threat, retorted Jack. <laughs> the two children laughed at Jack's grumpy reply. The House of Mirrors is so much fun, exclaimed Amy. Let's go, cried Ethan, as he grabbed his grandfather's hand. And with that, the four of them made their way toward the giant red, white, and blue sign that said, Welcome to the House of Mirrors. A man dressed like a clown stood at the entrance. He smiled and took their tickets. Upon entering the partly wooden, partly tented structure, they discovered an array or selection of distortion mirrors. Distortion means there were mirrors that have both concave and convex parts. As they stood in front of each mirror, they witnessed a variety of optical illusions. I have heard, oh no, I have a head shaped like a giant melon, pronounced Jack. This is so cool, said Ethan eagerly, looking into the mirror that had convex and concave parts. Look, I'm really tall and skinny. I am short and really, really wide, exclaimed Amy, looking at her reflection in the mirror. How is this possible, asked Ethan as he observed his new shape. Well, began Samuel, I'm glad that you asked that question, Ethan. Oh, no, I sense another speech, said Jack. And with that, Jack walked toward the entrance to the mirrored maze. You're going to miss my talk, said Samuel, as he watched Jack walk away. That's fine with me, replied Jack. Actually, it's a very simple concept, exclaimed Samuel, ignoring Jack's comment. Mirrors are made of reflective material. Each one of these mirrors has a different shape. Depending on the shape of the mirror, it can be used to bring light rays together or spread them apart. Some of these mirrors are concave and some have convex parts. Some are slightly twisted. Some are even folded, Samuel continued. Generally, convex mirrors make image, images look smaller, whereas concave mirrors make images look larger. When you put them together, you get some really funny shapes. So different mirrors do different things, said Ethan, who had been listening intently to his grandfather. Yes. For example, continued Sam Samuel, a convex mirror, like the ones on the side of your school bus, curve outward so that the rays of light striking them are forced to change directions and move away from each other, making distance objects look smaller and the background wider. This allows the bus driver to see more area around the bus. Objects very close to these mirrors may look wider and distorted. So there are mirrors that are just flat and they have the most accurate reflection as possible. And those are called plane mirrors, P-L-A-N-E. So the mirror on your bathroom wall is a plain mirror because we want to have a real image, real reflected, honest image. Cool, said Ethan. It is cool, exclaimed Samuel. In comparison, a concave mirror, like the large makeup mirror your mother has or the shaving mirror your father has, curves inward so that light rays hitting it are forced to change direction and move toward each other, making things look larger, exclaimed Samuel. I get it. 
I get it, exclaimed Amy happily. When light strikes either a concave or convex mirror, it is reflected in different ways at different angles. Right on the button, said Samuel. Light reflects differently in each mirror in such a way that it alters the view. The waves of light provide a clear but altered image. Hey guys, I'm kind of lost in here, came a very loud voice. It was Jack. So anytime you're ready, I'd welcome being rescued. The children laughed out loud. Well, you did go wandering off, yelled back Jack. Hold on, we're on our way. Samuel and his grandchildren made their way toward the entrance to the mirrored maze. The maze was a series of narrow mirrored corridors. The trick was to find an opening into a new corridor, and if you followed the path correctly, you would eventually find your way out. However, because the walls were made entirely out of framed mirrors, it was difficult to find the openings, and people had been known to walk round and around for a very long time. Eventually, Samuel, Amy, and Ethan found Jack. They basically followed the sound of his very loud complaints, and once they were all together, they put Ethan in charge of finding the way out. It didn't take him long to figure out the way to the exit. Once out of the maze, they spent the rest of the evening enjoying the fun of the fair. The children went on a variety of rides. They also ate ice cream and promised not to tell their mom that they had had dessert before dinner. Finally, it was time to go. Samuel had promised his daughter, Anna, that the children would be home in time for dinner. Time to go, children, said Samuel softly. Oh, Granddad, exclaimed Ethan. We haven't been on the Chero planes. Please, can we go on them? Please, pleaded Ethan. What do you say, Jack? Are you up for a little ride through the cool evening air? Said Samuel. Samuel, if I don't make it back alive, are you prepared to feed my fish? Yelled Jack. No problem. I'll take real good care of them, replied Samuel calmly. Okay, then. Let's do it. They reached the chair plane ride just as it had stopped. They found four chairs all in a row and seated themselves. They fastened the chain across the front of the seat and waited for the ride to begin. Several minutes later, they began to move through the air in perfect circles. Slowly, they rose higher and higher into the air as fair ground music began to play. Samuel and Jack looked at the children's eager faces and smiled with content. What's content? happy and peaceful. <laughs> Good. So where do the characters go in today's story? Yes, a carnival or a fair. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between a transparent object and an opaque object? Transparent objects allow light to pass through Opaque objects do not allow light to pass through. Can you name an example of a transparent object? A glass or a window. Can you name an example of an opaque object? Really, most metals, books, a tree trunk, anything that would cause a shadow during a bright day. <clears throat> what happens to light when it encounters a translucent object? Not transparent, not opaque, translucent. Well, some light passes through and some light is scattered. Can you name an example of a translucent object? Stained glass windows, waxed paper, Loosely woven cloth, frosted glass. What happened in the read aloud when the straw is placed in a glass of water? The straw looked separated, magnified, and bent. Is the straw actually bending in the water? Or is it actually separated? No. So what causes the straw to look that way? 
light moving from one material to another material is refracted or bent. So the light has moved through the air, through the glass, and through the water. As it moves through all of those items, it changes speed, thus it changes direction, and it is refracted or bent. What is a lens? A lens is a curved piece of transparent glass or plastic that focuses together or spreads apart rays of light. Convex lens, what does it look like? Look like? Well, a convex lens curves outward toward the viewer so that it is thicker in the middle than the edges. What does a concave lens look like? It curves inward away from the viewer like a cave goes in so that it is thinner in the middle than at the edges. What are some instruments that use lenses that you heard about in today's Read Aloud? Magnifying glasses, binoculars, microscopes, telescopes, security cameras, photographic cameras, peepholes, eyeglasses. You heard that the house of mirrors in the story had distortion mirrors with different convex and concave parts. What does Ethan see when he looks at his reflection in one of these distortion mirrors? He looks tall and skinny. And what does Amy see when she looks at her reflection in one of the distortion mirrors? She looks short and wide. What type of mirror is flat and has an accurate reflection? A plane mirror, P-L-A-N-E. So take a look around the classroom and maybe out the window. Are there any concave or convex objects that you can see? Well, depends on where you are. If you're sitting at home, you probably have a better chance of seeing some concave. Remember those are the ones that push in the middle? Uh, you might have a spoon or a bowl which is concave. A satellite dish could be concave. Convex items could be the outside of domes, the outside of spoons and bowls, school bus mirror, magnifying lenses. In my classroom, there is a glass or plastic over the clock that's in our room, and it has a um, convex glass to it. <clears throat> All right, we're going to stop there. Make sure that you know the difference between opaque, translucent, and transparent. Opaque means you cannot see through it. It would cause a shadow. Translucent means some light shines through. Uh, but it makes a blurry image. If something is transparent, it allows most light to shine through, and it is uh, possible to see a clear image right through it. Thank you. Talk to you next time.